race over in the NFC as well. Yeah, I've been really impressed with what the Vikings have done. Kirk Cousins has shown that, hey, he's worth worthy of the contract that he never got in Washington. Uh, he, he can win football games. Uh, the Packers are the Packers, and we know that Aaron Rodgers is going to get things done. Uh, but I've been really impressed with the Vikings, the 49ers at 9-1. and one. Um, You know, they you wait for them to bend and break, but they've only broke once in that one loss. Um, I like what I've seen out of the 49ers and Jimmy Garoppolo. Do I trust them fully in the playoffs? Uh, no, I'm going to I'm going to go with a team like Aaron Rodgers that's got the quarterback that can get it done. Or if Minnesota were to get a home field advantage, that's a very very tough place to play. They only got down to Denver last Sunday, but they got back in that game and wound up winning. Um, so that's 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 where you kind of are in the NFC. Um, I don't really trust the Eagles. I don't really trust the Cowboys at this point. Um, so 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 we're going to see how how that plans out, but. But right now, I think the Vikings and the Packers, um, maybe the Rams, but they they haven't really been impressive either. I mean, it took took a lot. I mean, it took it took a big defensive stand to beat uh, the Bears as the backup quarterback. So I think Vikings and Packers right now are the two teams that I most look for, look for um, to come out of the NFC. Well, and we'll, we'll certainly see what happens. Uh, but as as we walk around the NFL this week, what are some of the games we're looking at here? We, we're seeing, uh, obviously, the, the, one of the big games was on Thursday night, and that was the Colts against against Houston. But we've got uh, uh, Cleveland, who's who's starting to figure things out uh, in spite of what happened uh, last week. Uh, what are your thoughts as we walk around the NFL? Um, yeah, I mean, I think you're looking at, a couple of games that maybe stick out to you, um, you know, the Saints, can they show the offense of consistency that they showed last week? Or will they show the crap offense of performance that they showed two weeks ago at home? Um, outside of that, Seahawks and Eagles is a good one. I think that's kind of going to be mm, a gauge of absolutely. where the Seahawks are. To the East. And it's going to be a gauge of whether the Eagles can compete against playoff teams or not. Um, Packers 49ers obviously is, is a, going to be a great game. Uh, but I also said that Monday Nighter, uh, the Ravens going up against a pretty decent defense. West, would I take on the Rams? Um, I'm sorry, the Ra- yeah. So we'll see if the Ravens can go on the Rams, road, yeah. and we'll see if Lamar Jackson is the real deal um, by by going out west to take on LA and the Rams. So Ravens, Rams is a good one. Uh, 49ers, Packers, and Seahawks, Eagles would be the three games that that I would get my popcorn ready for. Well, definitely the Packers and the 49ers. I mean, if the Packers uh, find a way to beat the 49ers, it is going to really open up the debate who's the better team over there. Uh, I just – I like the Packers in this matchup on the road against San Francisco. Yeah, I mean, it's Aaron Rodgers. It's Aaron Rodgers. You you know, you go with what you know, and it's Aaron Rodgers can make the plays when needed. This this has 20 to 17 written all over it, a low-scoring game. Um, we'll, we'll see if the 49ers can bring it. It's, it's their second biggest test of the year. And the last time we were talking about the 49ers having a big test, uh, you know, they lost at home to the Seahawks. Uh, they struggled a little bit in putting away the Cardinals last week. Um, they struggled actually two out of the last three weeks to put away the Cardinals. So uh, we'll see if we get the, the 49ers team that, that struggles late in the fourth quarter or the team that blows good people out like they did the Panthers with the Redskins and with the Browns a few weeks ago. Let's put on the Homer hat again. My Indiana Hoosiers played that tough, tough game against Penn State last week. This week they host uh, Michigan. I mean, Michigan comes in at eight and two. But when was the last time we got to say that IU was seven and three hosting Michigan at eight and two and coming off a? I mean, it it was a um, epic game last week, and I, I I'm I'm it's unfortunate that IU lost, but as an IU fan how they played against Penn state was amazing. And if, and if they beat Michigan today, that's just another, uh, another icing on the cake, if you will. But what are your thoughts? Are you in Michigan? Yeah. I mean, I used seen the, the last couple of years to play uh, really well against Michigan, whether it was down in IU or down in Bloomington, um, if they can get the passing game going and kind of get that defense offset a little bit that Michigan brings at you and get them uncomfortable. I used got a chance to make this a competitive game. Uh, I would take IU in the points if I was betting it. Uh, I think this is a different IU team than we've seen over the last couple of years. They know they're going to go bowling. Uh, they've got the confidence. They've got the high-powered offense. Uh, I've been very impressed with the Hoosiers so far this year. You know, uh, the, the the good and the bad of winning and have a winning season is that once you have a winning season, teams start looking at coaches. Tom Allen might be looked at by other teams, but – I'd hate to see him go, but do you think there's a possibility of Tom Allen 
uh, after a successful season this year, go somewhere else? I don't think so. Um, I think he still has to prove that he can do this consistently in a very tough Big Ten. Uh, I mean, this is the first year that they've had under Tom Allen where um, they were relevant and you didn't think they were going to get blown on every week. So I think if he maybe has another year of this, uh, there's a possibility. But, I mean, look at Brom. People were looking at Brom, and he struggled this year. So if you can consistently have a bowl team, uh, you know, two years in a row, three years in a row, then yes. But I think we're a year or two away from uh, from Tom Allen being looked at by any other teams. You think we're uh, getting close to a New Year's Day bowl game? Uh, I think a, a win today against Michigan would definitely uh, bode well for that. Uh, I think the Citrus Bowl uh, is an outside opportunity. Uh, but more than likely, this team ends up in the Red Box Bowl or the Music City Bowl down in Nashville. Well, it's a bowl game. I don't care if it's the toilet bowl. I'll take yeah. it. That's for sure. L- LSU, Ohio State, Clemson, Georgia, and Alabama all ran out the top five. Um, uh, the, your top three are all undefeated. At this point, I think we're, we, we're starting to really see the uh, final four uh, come into play. Uh, but uh, Tua out with Alabama, how big, of, how big of an issue is that? And scary thing seeing him get hurt off the field, but uh, maybe if you're an Alabama hater, you don't want anything bad to happen to Tua, but you're, you're okay with the fact that he's not on the field. Yeah, and the thing with Alabama is, I mean, you know, you think about the other loss to LSU, but is that a blessing in the skies knowing that, okay, now we don't have to play in the SEC championship game, and LSU does, and if LSU were to lose to Georgia – that moves Georgia up, obviously, some men into the top four, and would maybe Alabama slide in kind of the back door there. So we'll see what Ohio State can do at Penn State today. I'm interested to see these teams that are trying to stay in the top four, how badly they blow teams out. I mean, LSU is 42-point favorites today um, against Arkansas, uh, Penn State, and, Alabama, and, and Ohio State. Ohio State's 20-point favorites over number eight Penn State, and that just shows the fact that even Vegas thinks these teams that are trying to stay in the top four are going to blow as many teams out as possible uh, and with Alabama today playing Western Carolina, I mean, that's a 55-point game. I know Western Carolina probably would start me at quarterback if they could. Uh, but at the end of the day, like these teams that are in the top four are going to be blowing some people out, uh, and we'll see what Georgia can do next week when they return to the field as well. You mentioned that Ohio State and Penn State certainly uh, – you mentioned to uh, get out your popcorn and watch this game, Penn State and Ohio State. Uh, big game. Let's uh, break that down for a second. What are your thoughts on that? Because I think – that uh, Ohio State will win it, but I think Penn State can stay in it. Yeah, and I think Penn State at number eight right now is thinking, okay, we have a very outside chance of making it uh, to, you know, the, 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 the final four, so to speak. But if you beat Ohio State today on the road, you're going to move up into sixth, maybe even fifth, and then you break yourself into the Big Ten championship game. If you win that, you could be sitting pretty knowing like, okay, hey, we went to Ohio State. We got that win. We're the Big Ten champions. We should get a look at as well. And, I mean, this is a Penn State team that at 9-1, and one, um, you know, only has that one loss at Minnesota. Uh, and Minnesota, we see now, it's ranked in the top 12, top 10. Um, I think Penn State's thinking, hey, if we can go in and we can upset these boys in Ohio State and, and punch our ticket to the Big Ten championship game, we've got a chance to make it to that, to that, uh, that final four of the college football playoffs. Tony Donna here with the Tony T podcast joins us. Finally, uh, Tony, uh, the NFL releases their top uh, 12 running backs of all time. Uh, let me get your thoughts on this list. Jim Brown, Earl Campbell, Dutch Clark, uh, Eric Dickerson, Lenny Moore, Marion Motley, and Walter Payton, obviously Walter Payton will be there. Barry Sanders, uh, of course, uh, Gail Sanders. Do we, do we keep O.J. Simpson in this list? In, in lieu of what we know about O.J. Simpson, Emmett Smith and Steve Van Buren. You know, I think what sticks out to me the most is just how far down Walter Payton and Barry Sanders are. I mean, you know, I never got to really see Walter Payton play, but you go back and you look at the highlights, and, and the guy was, uh, I mean, he was huge. He was running people over when he needed to, and Barry Sanders was so fast out of the backfield, and Yes, he retired early, and he never really was on a team that was capable of, of going to a Super Bowl or making a run. But, but Barry Sanders and Walter Payton being that low on that list is, is, is a little surprising to me, yes. I, I still have a problem with – and maybe because I – you know, <laughs> he was found innocent in the court of law, but uh, O.J. Simpson, I just think maybe he's one of those players that 
we strike from the history books if that's possible. I mean, yeah, yeah, but I mean, what what are our thoughts about a guy like OJ being on these top lists among some of the greats of the game? I mean, he was just as good at getting out of tackles as he was with getting out of murders. So, I mean, you got to throw him <laughs> in there, I guess. I guess so. And then, uh, but just everything that's been associated with OJ Simpson. I guess yeah, you gotta you gotta gotta throw him in the mix. But yet you can't put Pete Rose in the the Hall of Fame. So a bum bum. That's a that's a whole that's a whole nother can of worms. Tony Donahue from the Tony <laughs> D Podcast. Uh, as as we uh, appreciate you, you joining us here, but uh, real quickly, uh, thoughts on on uh, Kyle Busch uh, winning the uh, NASCAR championship? Yeah, I mean he had he didn't have the best car, but you know a mistake made on pit road by Martin Truex kind of gifted it to Kyle and um, to break out of the break out of the losing streak that he had been on since May. Um, you know he's he's a consistent driver, and when you put him in a one on one situation where he only has to beat three other guys two being his teammates that are in the same engineering meetings and the same meetings that he is. Uh, he, I thought that he was definitely the favorite. I thought Denny Hamlin had the momentum after the win in Phoenix. So yeah. um, another championship for Kyle Busch, um, kind of kind of dull and boring to me, if you want me to be honest. No, I totally agree. And I, I'm very disappointed with uh, uh, Han, uh, Denny Hamlin. I mean, I just – I mean, there toward the end, I was just thinking, man, he's he's going to get this, and then it just faded away. What 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 do we contribute to what happened with Denny? Uh, I, I thought Denny thought that his car just went away when it turned nighttime. I mean, I thought he had a chance uh, to win it, and then you know, Truex was dominating the entire race, and once he had that problem on pit road, I mean, you can't put the wrong tire on the wrong on on the wrong wheel there. Uh, in a championship race. So, yeah, I'm sure Denny was disappointed. I mean, I kind of wanted to see him win since he'd be a first-time champion, but uh, he just simply didn't have it. And, and when, when Truex kind of bowed out, uh, Kyle Busch had the, had the next best car and, and, and took advantage of the opportunity. you got to ask yourself, if you're Denny Hamlin and if you're the crew chief of Denny Hamlin's team, those kind of mistakes just can't – you talk about putting the wrong tire on – those, those kind of mistakes can't happen in a championship race. Race is over. We're into the off season. If you're if your ownership, or T- Denny Hamlin, if you're Denny Hamlin, you go into ownership saying, "Hey, uh, I'm questioning some leadership here." Uh, I mean, it happened. Yeah, it happened on Martin Truex's car. Actually, that's why he lost the championship. And and I and it's crazy that that happens, knowing that it, this is the 36th race of the year. This is. You know, you should have these kinks out. And on top of that, um, you know, you kind of think about uh, Cole Pern, who's his crew chief, who kind of who kind of owns up to everything, you know, sit down, admit the mistake, and move on. But, yeah, you, you would hope that wouldn't happen in a championship race. Tony John here for the Tony D Podcast. Tony, you want to stick around and talk some college football with us, or you got to bail? i got to run, buddy. Thanks for having me on. All right, man. You have yourself a good Thanksgiving. You too. Take care. All right. Tony Donahue of the Tony D Podcast joins us to, to talk some uh, college football and uh, NASCAR and IndyCar with us. So glad that he was able to join us today. 917-889-8516 or digits. We'll be right back right here on the Balance Radio Network.
bum 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 bum